So let's try uh, let's try answering this uh, sample problem. Uh, compute the tensile service load capacity for the very type connection of two members in the figure, which is this. If letter A, uh, the, the bolt threads are excluded from the shear plane, and letter B, the bolt threads are included in the shear plane, uh, use AASC or NSCP specification, the NRFT method with 7 over 8 inches diameter 8 into 5 bolts in standard holes and A572 grade 50 steel plates. The, the service live load is 3 times the service uh, dead load. Okay. So we, have, we are given here a, again, a lap joint. So we have two plates. We have two plates, the upper plate and then the lower plate. And uh, they are being subjected to a tensile force T. Okay. And then they are be being connected by four bolts, uh, one, two, three, four, with a dimension and geometry as shown in the figure. And then uh, the diameter of the bolts as given in the problem uh, are 7 over 8 inches and they are 8, 3 to 5 bolts in standard holes. So take note the holes are in standard, Okay, as, as was given in the problem. And the plates are A572 grade 50 steel plates. So we are just uh, being being asked for the maximum tensile stress or maximum tensile service load capacity of this bearing type connection. So we have here a bearing type connection, meaning we don't need to uh, pretension our our bolts here. Kasi nga, bearing type naman siya. So mainly, uh, it, the, the strength of this uh, member will be mainly depend on the bearing and the shear uh, shear capacity of the of the connected member as well as the bolt. Okay, so we just we are just given uh, two cases. The first case is that is the case wherein the threads of the bolt are exclude are excluded from the shear plane. Sabi lang nun, yung threads ng bolt natin hindi siya sumakto dun sa shear plane. Wala siya dito sa mismong interface on dalawang uh, dalawang connected parts natin. That's the first case. And then the second case is that yung, yung bolt thread sumakto na dun sa shear plane. Nandito na yung mga threads natin. So, dito yung lalabas na maximum uh, tensile service load. Yung uh, force T natin dito that can uh, <coughs> that can be resisted by this connection. Okay? Assuming that the live load is three times the service dead load. Okay, so let's try to answer this uh, sample problem. So with that, uh, we have to since we we are uh, we are tasked to to compute for the capacity of this uh, connection as a whole. Therefore, we have to check the capacities of number one, the tension member itself or yung mga plate itself. Okay, we have to check yung uh, strength capacity nila as well as yung strength capacity ng mga bolts that connects the, or that connect the, the two plates. Okay, so let's start the computation of the capacity with the capacity of the tension member or yung tension, or yung uh, mga plate themselves. Okay, check natin yung magiging, uh, yung maximum uh, tensile force that can be resisted by each of the plates. Okay, for this particular connection given this uh, data. Okay, so let's start with the computation of the capacity of the member with respect to tensile yielding as can be seen from AISC J4. So yung J4, oftentimes, ito yung ginagamit natin na code provision for computation of the capacity of uh, members in a, or affected elements of members in a, in a connection. Okay, so every time merong connection dyan, and we want to check the capacity of the affected elements of the member as well as the connecting elements. We just need to refer to section AI, uh, section uh, of the AISC J4. Okay, so the first part there, as you can see, is the strength of the element or the member in resisting tension. Okay, so the tensile, uh, the tensile stress or the tensile uh, capacity of the member will be mainly depend on the tensile yielding of the connecting elements as well as the tensile rupture of the connecting elements. So this, uh, this is actually the, uh, the same lang on how we discussed this before sa, sa tension members na topic. 
Okay, we just have to compute their corresponding capacity. Intensal yielding, tensal rupture, as well as a block shear. So, nakalagay din dito yung sa block shear. Okay, so let's start with the computation of the capacity of the tension member. Again, tension member muna yung check natin na capacity, ah. Yung mismong mga plate muna. Check natin yung capacity nila with respect sa tensile yielding. And according to the code, as you can see here, yung tensile uh, capacity daw in yielding ng uh, plate natin or ng connected element natin is just equal to uh, FYAG as can be seen dito sa formula natin. Rn natin is just equal to FYAG, uh, wherein yung FY natin is the yield stress of the connected element, which can be found sa <coughs> sa sa given natin na na, na data sa, sa problem. So, sabi niya, A570 daw yung plate natin, grade 50. So, obviously, ang FY natin doon ay 50. Kasi grade 50 daw siya eh. As we all know, that is how we, we know the yield stress of an element or a steel plate. Uh, depende kung anong grade niya. <coughs> so, grade 50 to, ibig sabihin 50 KSI, yung FY niya. Okay? And then, multiply daw natin yun sa gross cross-sectional area nung uh, steel plate natin. Ang dimension ng steel plate natin, uh, it is just 5 over 8 by 6. Yung 5 over 8, obviously, that is the thickness of the plate. And then, yung 6 inches na yun is this. Itong dimension na to. Yung, yung width, kumbaga, ng plate. So, therefore, kung titignan natin yung uh, cross-sectional area ng plate natin, <coughs> it will just look similar to this. Kung ganito lang yung itsura niya. Kung, di natin, kung dito natin titignan sa, kumbaga sa, sa view na to, ang thickness niya ay 5 over 8, and then ang width niya is just equal to 6 inches. So, parang si inches yan. So, therefore, ang area niya is just equal to, or yung gross area niya is just equal to 5 over 8 times 6. So, this is your FY. This is your uh, AG. Okay? So, that is just equal to RN pa lang, as can be seen sa, sa code. So, para makuha natin yung, uh, kumbaga, yung capacity talaga, yung design capacity ng member natin, we just have to multiply RN by phi. And according to this, sa code, phi natin for tensile yielding I.9. For LRFD, we are, we are tasked to use LRFD. So, focusan tayo sa LRFD dito. So, ang fee natin ay 0.9. So, simplify na lang natin yan. Fee TN is just equal to 168.75 kips. Ibig sabihin lang yan, uh, this, load, this load here must be equal to 168.75 kips so that our plates will yield. Okay, our plates will start to yield. Yan yung magnitude ng tensile force that will make the plates yield. Okay? So, that is our uh, first, uh, yan yung uh, capacity ng member natin sa tensile yielding pa lang yan. Okay? Dito pa lang yan sa letter A. We, al we also have to check yung sa letter B, which is yung tensile rupture of the connected elements. And as as you can see here sa code, yung capacity na yon is just equal to FUAAE. So, we have to find FU as well as yung AE ng element natin. Okay? Yung element natin yung kailangan natin na, or yung, or yung plate, yung kailangan natin na makuha yung FU. Multiply natin sa AE. Okay? So, for tensile rupture, check din natin yung capacity ng member natin or ng connection natin with respect sa sa tensile rupture. Check muna natin yung AE niya. We know that AE is just equal to U times AN. So, before we, we will be able to compute AE, we need to compute for AN muna. Yung net tensile uh, 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 net area natin, kumbaga, yung net area natin. So, paano ba kinocompute yung net area? It is simply equal to uh, the gross area. Kunin lang natin yung gross area. And then, pwede natin isubtract lang yung, uh, yung uh, space being occupied by the bolt holes, which are this. Okay? Kung, kung dito tayo titingin sa, sa part na to. The cross-sectional area will look something like this. Okay? So, pwede natin kunin yung gross area, tapos, i-subtract na lang natin yung uh, yung, uh, yung area ng isang uh, bolt hole. Or pwede rin naman, kunin na lang natin yung uh, net width, kung tawagin. Net width, ibig sabihin yung width, sub, uh, reduced by the diameter of the bolt hole. So, para makuha yung net width, it is just equal to the net, uh, it, it is just equal to the gross width, which is 6 inches. Subtract natin yung dalawang bolt hole diameter na to. Kaya may times to ka dito. But you have to take note, yung bolt hole diameter natin must be effective. So, para maging effective siya, uh, yung bolt diameter natin 
i-add pa na mag-add pa tayo ng 1 over 8 to. Okay, para maging effective bolt hole uh, diameter siya. Okay, so that will be our effective uh, or our, our width, net width. This, this will be our net width. Okay, pag nakuha mo net width, multiply mo na lang sa thickness, which is this. So that will be your net area. Okay, so yung net area natin na yan, since we know that AE, <coughs> A is just equal to U, UAN, we just have to multiply that AN by U. Pero since we are dealing with plates, being connected, if you can remember from the tension, tension member uh, discussion, ang U, kapag uh, ang kinoconnect natin na member ay both plates, that is actually included sa case 1, wherein yung U natin ay just equal to 1. Okay? So, basically, yung AE natin will just be equal to 1 times AN na 2.5, na nakomplete natin kanina. So, uh, obviously, we can see that yung AN natin is obviously equal lang din sa AE. Okay, so 2.5 inches squared lang din yung AE natin. So with that, we can now readily compute for RN, or pwede ko nang idiretso sa phi RN. So multiply na natin agad ng, uh, ng phi. <coughs> okay. So ang phi natin for tensile rupture ay 0.75 as can be seen here. And then yung FU natin for, a, an, F, for an A572 grade 50 steel plate, para malaman nyo kung ano yung FU, you can refer sa table 2-4 sa AISC din to. And then, search for A572. This is A572. And then, this is A, uh, grade 50. And then, nakasulat na dito yung corresponding FY and FU niya. This is the FY, 50. As we have used uh, a while ago, 50. And then, yung FU niya, ito nakalagay, which is 65. So, substitute na lang natin yun sa, sa formula. Ang fee natin ay 0.75, ito. And then, ang FU natin, as can be seen here, ay 65 times AE, which is just equal to 2.5 inches squared. Simplify, 121.88 kips. Sabihin lang yan, that is the magnitude of the force T that must be applied dito sa member natin nang sa ganun magkaroon ng rupture dito sa net area para mapunit siya dito sa location ng mga bolts. Para mapunit siya dyan, kailangan mag-apply ka ng uh, force of equal to 128.88 kips. Okay. So, check na tayo sa unang dalawang capacity ng tension member. We just have to check yung block shear strength, which is equal to this. Although, for this particular problem, uh, it is obvious naman na block shear will not govern since it requires a larger force T to happen. Okay? You have to remember, yung capacity ng tension member, oftentimes, ang kinukuha natin ay yung smallest. Okay? Kung titignan nyo yung sa block shear, if you will try to imagine lang, try nyo lang mag-compute ng isang block shear capacity dito. Kahit ano lang, kahit tingin-tingin lang, kahit titik-titik lang. You can easily see na hindi naman siya mag-govern. Kunyari, uh, block shear failure na, kunyari ganito. Ano ba? Block shear failure na ganito. Yan. So, ang nag-tear off dito ay ito. I mean, yan yung natira. Yan yung natira dito. Yan. So, dito pa lang, may kita nyo na, if you will try to compute yung, yung capacity niya, dito sa shear, yung 0.6 FU ANB, ito, 0.6 times FU, which is 65, times ANV, yung net shear area, net shear area natin is just equal to 3 plus 1.5, 4.5, 4.5, minus ilang bolt hole yon 1.5 ng uh, 7 over 8 plus 1 over 8. I-add ko na yun. At that is equivalent to 1 na pala. 7 over 8 plus 1 over 8, uh, 1 yun, di ba? <coughs> okay. So, kung i-check natin yan, that will be equal to 0.6 times 65 times 4.5 minus 1.5. That will be 117 kips. Yan, yan pa lang to. It's isang term pa lang yan dito, ha, sa computation ng block shear capacity. 117 na agad. And you have to take note, dalawa yung, uh, dalawa yung uh, shear area natin dyan, eto, tsaka to. Yung kinompute natin, isa pa lang yan. Ta times 2 ko pa yan. Ta times 2 ko pa yan. So that will be equal to, uh, 234 na agad. 234 kips. At take note, sa shear pa lang yan, ha. Hindi pa natin kinocompute yung sa tension, which is this. So, definitely, pag kinumpit pa natin yung sa tension, mas lalaki pa yan sa 2, 3, 4 kips. Okay? Sabihin na natin na 
250. Assuming lang, 250 kips yan, yung block share capacity. Pag nag-250 yan, hindi pa rin yung mag-govern dito sa competition natin. Kasi, ang pinakamaliit pa rin ay yung 121.88 kips. Okay? So, with that, generally, we can say na hindi naman, mag hindi naman mag govern yung block share. So, huwag na natin pag-aksaya ng oras. Diba? Huwag na natin pag-aksaya ng oras. Kahit, kahit tignan-tignan mo na lang, hindi naman siya mag govern talaga. Okay? <coughs> so, with that, we will no longer check yung block share. But if you want to, you can check. You can check yung uh, block share capacity nito. Check yung mga iba't ibang uh, block share failure. And uh, most probably, hindi yun mag govern kasi mas malaki yun. Malamang, it will require a larger force T to produce that failure. Para mag-fail yung tension member natin in terms of block share, kailangan mo ng malaking magnitude ng T para mag-fail siya in that way. Okay. So, kung kailangan niya na mas malaki, eh di, hindi siya mag-govern kasi ang kinukuha nga natin ay yung pinakamaliit which is yung 121.88 kips. So, we can say na dito sa member na ina-analyze natin, yung capacity niya ng tension member will be equal to 121.88 kips. Okay. That is the capacity of the tension member alone. Tension member pa lang yan. Okay? We have to check as well yung strength ng bolts. So, okay na tayo dun sa mga plate, sa tension member itself. Kuna na tayo dun sa capacity ng mga bolts. So, yung capacity ng bolt natin dito, since we are given na bearing type connection, uh, obviously, ang capacity ng bolt dito will be coming from the shear strength as well as the bearing strength at bolt holes. Okay, so let's start to compute yung capacity ng bolts with respect sa, sa shear strength. Check muna natin yung uh, shear strength ng, uh, ng bolt for the first case. Sa case kung saan yung the, the, bolts, the bolt threads are excluded from the shear plane. Or ibig sabihin, yung thread hindi sumakto dun sa mismong shear plane. Okay, so for that case, wherein yung bolt threads are excluded from the shear plane, Usually, yung, yung symbol natin for that case wherein yung, yung threads hindi, uh, kung saan yung threads excluded from the shear plane, usually ganito yung symbol na ginagamit natin. Ninalagyan natin ng X. So, bakit may X? Kasi nga, excluded. Okay? So, that pertains to the case wherein yung bolt threads are excluded from the shear plane. Kaya nga may X. Okay? Check natin yung shear capacity nung uh, nung bolt ta diyan sa sa case na yan kung saan yung bolt threads are excluded from the shear plane. Okay? The formula for the shear strength ng uh, bolts can be found sa AISC J3.6 as I have shown a while ago and that is just equal to FNAB where in yung FN natin will be FNV na. FNV na yan kasi nga we are computing the shear strength capacity. So this will be FNV na. Okay? Wherein yung FNB can be found in table J3.2. Since we are given 83 to 5 volts, and then excluded daw yung bolt threads. So, ito lang naman yung 83 to 5 dyan eh. Itong dalawa eh. Tapos hanapin mo na lang yung excluded. <coughs> so, nasan dyan yung excluded? Threads are not excluded. Threads are excluded. So, dito tayo. Okay. So, as you can see here, yung FNB niya, for that case, wherein yung... Uh, Uh, threads are not, are, are, are yung, yung threads are excluded, ang FNB na niya is just equal to 60 KSI. Okay? So, yun yung gagamitin natin na, na FNB dito, 60 KSI, multiply lang natin sa AB, sa cross-sectional area nung uh, uh, bolt natin, at the untreated, untreated portion, or simply yung cross-sectional area niya lang. Diba? Yung, yung mismong uh, area lang nito. So, kunin mo lang yung area niyan, that is just circular, pi over 4 diameter squared lang naman yan. Okay? And then, yung fee niya, take note, either for shear or tension, 0.75. So, kung didiretso na natin kumpitin yung uh, ultimate, yung nakareduce na, uh, that will be fee RN, wherein yung fee natin ay 0.75, eto, times FNV, which is 60 KSI, as was shown dito sa table, times yung AB, yung uh, cross-sectional area ng uh, bolt natin, which is yung Gross lang, yung simpleng area lang nito. So, kung ang diameter nito ay 7 over 8, so, ito yon Ito yon ibig sabihin. Ito yung bolt. Ito yung mismong bolt body. So, yung diameter na yan is equal to this. Yan yung sinasabi dyan na diameter. So, kung kunin mo yung area nyan, which is yung AB, edi kunin mo lang area ng circle. Pi over 4 times diameter squared. So, yan yung area dito sa untreated portion. Ha? Untreated portion. Yung AB, take note, As defined here, nominal untreated body area. Palagi yung sa untreated. 
Okay? So, simplify, the answer will be 27.6, uh, 27.06 kips. But you have to take note, yung, yung uh, capacity na to is just for 1 volt. For 1 volt lang yan. So, lagyan natin ng per volt dito para di tayo malito. That's the capacity of the 1 volt pa lang. Isang volt pa lang yan. For shear strength pa lang yan, ha? For shear strength. <coughs> okay? So, in addition to that, we also have to check yung bearing strength nung, uh, nung plate at the bolt holes. Okay? So, we have to check for the bearing strength. And yung, yung uh, uh, provision for the computation of bearing strength can be found sa AISC J3.10 na pinakita ko na rin kanina, wherein yung mga uh, values ng uh, FU, kasi may FU dito eh, sa, sa formula natin eh. Ito. Yan. Di ba? May mga FU dyan. So, yung value ng FU natin can be found in this. So, panapin lang natin yung A572 grade 50. This A572 and then ito yung grade 50. So, ito yung mga corresponding uh, FY niya at saka FU65. Na nakuha na rin naman natin yung kanina. Okay? So, we have different choices dito. A, B, C. Uh, yung C, definitely, hindi natin ito gagamitin kasi this is for unstiffened box member at H, HSS. Yung letter B, this is for a bolt in a connection with long slatted holes. Hindi rin natin gagamitin yan kasi standard holes lang tayo. Yung letter A, may dalawang case pa siya. Yung unang case, yung uh, deformation is the being considered. And then sa letter B, or, or I mean sa Roman numeral 2, this is for uh, the case wherein the, the formation of the bolt holes is not a design consideration. So, samba, samba yung mas critical dito? Yung i-consider natin yung deformation at bolt holes or yung hindi natin i-consider yung deformation sa bolt holes? Siyempre, doon na tayo sa mas, uh, mas maliit yung kalalabasan, which is ito. Kasi ito 1.2 lang ito eh. Ito 1.5 oh. So, mas malaki ito. If ever, kung compete natin yan, malamang mas malaki ito compared dito. So, doon tayo sa mas maliit na capacity for bearing. <coughs> okay, so we will use 1.2 LCTFU. Okay, so compute natin yun. And then, uh, i-diretso na natin ultimate. Multiply na natin siya sa fee, which is equal to 0.75 as, uh, as given in the code. So that will be 0.75 times 1.2 times LC. Take note, aning LC natin? That is the edge distance. That is actually the edge distance from the edge or end distance, sorry. <clears throat> that is the end distance from the edge of the bolt hole up to the edge of the connected member or connected plate. Okay? So, basically, ito yon, Yung LC na hinahanap dyan. This is our LC. So, how do we compute that? If this is 1.5, 1 on 1, on one half eh, or 1.5, isubtract lang natin yung half netong diameter ng bolt hole natin. Okay? Take note, bolt hole yung pinag-uusapan dyan, which is, standard hole, as I mentioned a while ago, ang standard hole natin is just diameter plus 1 over 16 lang. Okay? So, dito ko, kayo baka malito lang pag medyo na nirelate nyo sa tension member, kasi sa tension member plus 1 over 8. So, dito, sa computation ng bearing strength, what we need here is yung uh, yung uh, tinatawag natin na standard hole or yung uh, bolt, bolt hole diameter. Okay? So, naka-standard to, so this will ba with this will just be 7 over 8 plus 1 over 16. Okay, as was shown before, kung naalala nyo yung uh, uh, code provision for the size of the hole na pinakita ko, di ba pag 7 over 8 doon, magiging uh, 15 over 16 ba yun? 15 over 16, which is just equal to 7 over 8 plus 16, uh, 1 over 16. Yeah, 15 over 16. This is also 15 over 16 na nakalagay doon sa, sa code. Yung pinakita ko na table sa inyo uh, kanina. Okay, so dyan, medyo uh, check nyo mabuti yan, baka magkamali kayo dyan. Okay, so minus lang natin sa 1.5, itong half ng diameter, para makuha na natin to yung LC. Okay, and then, uh, yan na yung magiging LC natin, and then multiply daw yan sa T, sa thickness ng uh, connected part, which is 5 over 8, and then multiply sa FU, which is again 65, as a... Uh, written here in the table. And then, simplify, that will be 37.71 kips per volt pa rin, ha? Per volt pa rin yan. Isang volt lang yung, capacity ng isang volt lang yung nakukumpit natin dyan. Okay? Pero, hindi pa natin dapat itake yan as the bearing strength kasi kukumpare pa natin yan dito sa 2.4 DTFU. Okay? Compare pa natin yan sa 2.4 DTFU na naka-ultimate na rin. So, multiply na rin natin ng fee. Fee, 2.4, tapos T, 
yung B take note, the uh, nominal hole diameter lang yun. Or simply the diameter of the, uh, I mean nominal bolt diameter. Yung di natin da, dyan, dito sa formula na to, that is just the nominal bolt diameter. Or simply the diameter of the bolt, which is uh, 7 over 8. Okay? 7 over 8 times, ano yun, uh, times FU, which is 65 pa rin. Simplify, ito yung lalabas. And again, that is for, per bolt pa lang yan, per bolt. Okay? So, this is the maximum value, and as we have computed, yung na-compute natin na to, hindi naman siya lumagpas sa maximum value, therefore, okay to. Okay to. Ito yung iti-take natin as our bearing strength capacity. Kasi itong isa, ano lang naman ito, kung baga limit lang ito eh. Ito yung maximum value ng uh, bearing strength for this case sa letter I, ay sa Roman, Roman, Roman numeral I. Pag nangyari na itong na-compute mo, lumagpas dito sa maximum, syempre yung maximum lang yung gagamitin mo as bearing strength. So, with that, na-compute na natin yung uh, bearing strength, which is 37.71 kips per, per bolt. And obviously, uh, kung i-compare natin, kung i-compare natin yung uh, bearing strength sa shear strength, sino sa dalawa yung mag-govern? Is it 27.06 or yung 37.71 kips? Siyempre, yung mag-govern dyan na strength ng bolt ay yung 27.06. Yung mas maliit palagi. Okay, kasi nga, 27.06 pa lang, mag-fail na yung bolt natin sa shear. So, paano pa siya mag-fail sa bearing sa, sa plate natin? So, hindi na siya aabot dito. Dito pa lang kasi, fail na siya. So, hindi mag-govern natin na capacity ng bolt natin. Yung 27.06 kip per uh, bolt. Okay? So, since yun yung shear strength ng isang bolt natin, and we have 4 bolts, meron tayo apat na bolts dito eh. So, multiply lang natin yan sa 4 para makuha natin yung uh, total uh, total uh, uh, force to uh, to produce a shear failure dito sa bolt natin. So, times 4 mo lang yan, that will be 108.24 kips. Sabi lang yan, yan yung magnitude ng force na to na kailangan i-apply natin para mag-fail yung mga bolt natin in shear. Okay? So, if you will try to uh, try to compare that dito sa na-compute natin na capacity Nung, nung tension member natin. Obviously, yung na-compute natin na capacity ng bolt ay less than sa capacity nung tension member itself. So, sino yung mag-govern sa kanila? Again, of course, yung mas maliit. Okay? Kasi nga, yung mas maliit na value, ibig sabihin lang nito, pag yung in-apply mo na first gen, 108.24 kips, mag-fail na yung bolt mo. So, ibig sabihin lang yan, hindi naaabot sa point kung saan mag-fail yung uh, plate mo. Hindi yung kung saan magra-rupture na yung uh, yung plate mo. Hindi ito aabot. Hindi ito hindi ito mangyayari kasi sa 108 pa lang fail na yung bolt mo. So hindi na aabot sa point kung saan magra-rupture, magte-tensile rupture yung plate mo. So therefore, what we will take here is the the capacity of the connection itself is equal to 108.24 kips assuming that bolt threads are excluded from the shear plate. Okay? But uh, hindi naman yan yung inaanap sa tanong. Ang inaanap sa tanong ay yung tensile service load capacity or yung simply yung dead load plus live load. Okay, pag naririnig yung mga service service na ganyan, that is just pertains to the to the to the sum of the loads being carried by the member alone. Wala nang mga load factors. Okay, so ang kailangan natin dito is are, are just uh, the dead load plus live load. Okay? So assuming that this is the this is the capacity of the connection 108.24 kips, that is our FTT FTN yung uh, yung VTN na yan must be uh, <coughs> must be resisted by the by the applied force of course ito yung capacity ng member natin eh so yung applied force dito na T must be equal to or less than the capacity 108.24 kips so diyan tayo mag uh, magi start ng computation for the <coughs> for the tensile service load capacity being asked by the problem but before we proceed to that we also have to check yung mga geometry ng connection natin. We also have to check yung minimum spacing, minimum edge distance, maximum spacing uh, and edge distance, and so on and so forth. Okay? So, if you will try to check each of these naman, you can easily see na pasok naman to, yung mismong connection natin. For example, sa minimum spacing, as you can see, ang diameter natin, 7 over 8. 7 over 8 multiply ko yan sa 3, that is equal to 2.63. So, ibig sabihin lang yan, minimum spacing dapat ng mga bolts natin ay 2.63. Eh, yung actual niya nga, 3 inches eh. So, therefore, pasok siya dun sa minimum spacing. Okay? Sa minimum edge distance, as you can see here sa 
sa table na to, for a bolt diameter of 7 over H, uh, 7 over 8, sabi niya, at shirt edges, ang uh, minimum edge distance is 1.5. Ayun, 1 and 1 half. Which is yun naman talaga yung edge distance natin dito, na nakalagay, 1.5. So, pasok ka rin dun sa minimum edge distance. Okay din tayo dun. Check mo rin yung maximum spacing, uh, 12 times the thickness, 12 times 5 over 8, 7.5. So, yan daw yung maximum spacing natin, which is, pasok din naman, kasi 3 inches nga lang yung spacing natin eh. Hindi man lang siya umabot sa 7.5 eh. Diba? So, okay pa rin. Although, ang mag-govern dito, yung 6 inches. Mag-govern dito na spacing, maximum spacing, 6 inches. Pero kahit yun yung mag-govern, 3 inches lang naman yung spacing natin, pasok pa rin siya dun sa maximum. Okay? And even yung mga, <clears throat> even yung mga other, uh, other requirements dito, you can easily check. Okay naman. Pasok naman tayo. Okay? So, with that, uh, pwede na tayo mag-proceed sa computation natin ng tensile surface load capacity. Okay? So, na-compute na natin yung VTN, and we know that the VTN, or just simply the capacity of the connection, must be greater than or equal sa uh, applied load. Since naka-LRFD tayo, naka-TU tayo, or naka-ultimate. Okay? Since uh, mukhang dead load at live load lang naman yung nag act dito sa connection natin, kasi yun lang naman yung binigay niya na info eh. Live load, tsaka dead load lang naman eh. So, therefore, we will just use the load case of dead load plus live load lang. And usually naman, ang nag-govern lang doon ay yung 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 live load. Okay? So, yung capacity natin na 108.24 must be greater than or equal dito sa ultimate load that will be experienced by the connection, which is 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 live load. Pero sinabi sa tanong na yung live load is just 3 times of the service dead load or in equation form, we can say na yung live load is just equal to 3D. So, pwede natin palitan yung live load dito ng 3 times D or 3D. So, ito yung lalabas. Palitan natin siya ng 3DL. 3TDL. 3 times the dead load. Simplify mo to, this will, this will, this will just equal to 6TDL. So, TDL na lang nakawala dyan. You can easily compute for TDL. Yung, yung uh, dead load. And you can compute that the dead load must be equal to or less than 18.04 kips para hindi ka lumagpa sa 108.24 kips na capacity no connection natin. So, kung TDL natin 18.04, we can easily compute for L. Times 3 mo lang yung dead load as was given sa problem. So, that will be 54.12 kips. So, basically, yung tensile service load capacity na hinahanap, which is simply dead load plus live load. Dead load plus live load lang yun, pag ganun yung sinasabi niya sa tanong. So, add lang natin yung dead load tsaka live load. So, basically, that will just be 18.04 plus 54.12, which is equal to 72.16 kips. And that is already the answer for the problem <coughs> at hand. Okay? So, ibig sabihin lang yan, the, the maximum or the tensile service load capacity of our connection, assuming that the bolt threads are excluded from the shear plane, is just equal to 72.16 kips. Okay? So, yan yung uh, service load na pwedeng i-carry nitong member natin, assuming na walang load factor, service load lang siya, uh, para hindi mag-fail or before mag-fail yung, uh, yung connection natin. Okay? Hanggang dyan lang yung uh, applied load T na pwede mong i-apply sa kanya before siya mag-fail, hanggang 72.16 kips. Okay? But again, you have to take note, that is for the first case pa lang sa letter A, wherein yung bolt threads are excluded. We, we also have another case wherein yung, uh, yung bolt threads are included naman. So, pag ganun naman, pag included, included may letter N. So, ang symbol natin doon usually, nilalagyan lang natin ng capital N to, to, to show na bolt threads are included from the shear plate. Okay? So, compute din natin yung, ano, yung uh, capacity ng bolt assuming that bolt threads are included. Okay? So, let's start with the shear strength. Sa shear strength, ito pa rin yung formula natin. So, basically, ang mag-iiba lang dito, since yung bolt threads are already included, mag-iiba lang dyan ay yung value ng FNV. So, kanina, ang ginamit natin na FNV ay ito. So, 8325 tayo. Ang ginamit natin kanina, yung 60. Since uh, excluded. Pero ngayon, since included na, ito na yung gagamitin natin, yung 48. Okay, so 48 na nilagay natin dito as, a, as our FNB. And then ito yung AB natin, and then ito yung FIN natin, 0.75, as given in the, in the, in the code. So, simplify, ito yung lalabas na capacity, or shear strength capacity, ng isang bolt pa lang yan. Okay, <clears throat> we also have to compute as well yung sa bearing strength. Pero kung mapapansin nyo, kahit naman included na yung bolt thread sa, sa shear plane, wala naman actually effect yun sa bearing strength. ba? So kung kupitin nyo yung bearing strength, Ah, uh, 
for uh, for, for that case wherein yung ball threads are in, already included in the shear plane. Makukumpitin yung bearing strength. Basically, yun pa rin yung makukumpit nyo katulad kanina. Okay? Yun pa rin yung nakumpit na natin dito. 37.71, maximum 63.98. Okay, so wala nagbago. Wala na may effect yung ball threads included dun sa bearing strength. Sa shear strength lang yung may effect. Okay, so kung i-compare natin yung dalawa, ang mag-govern pa rin dito ay yung sa shear strength, which is 27 point, uh, 21.65, kasi ito 37.71. So mas maliit to. So yan yung gagamitin natin na capacity ng, ng bolts with respect sa, sa shear. Okay, I mean yan yung gagamitin natin na capacity ng, <coughs> ng, ng bolt natin, which is actually the capacity with respect sa shear strength. 21.65 kips kips per uh, per volt pa lang. <coughs> okay. So with that, ah uh, since na compute na natin yung capacity nung uh, nung volt natin with respect sa uh, sa shear strength niya na nag-govern, we can now compute for the total capacity of the volt. Since meron tayong apat na volt times 4 pa natin yung 21.65, so the total capacity will be 86.6 kips. So, kung i-compare mo yan ulit dito sa tension na capacity ng member natin, ng tension member natin, um, obviously, mas maliit pa rin to yung sa volt. Compare mo sa capacity ng tension member natin. So, basically, ang mag-govern pa rin dito ay yung volt itself. Okay? So, hindi pa rin nag-govern yung capacity ng tension member natin or ng plate. Ang nag-govern pa rin is yung capacity ng volt. Kasi mas mababa pa rin yung Uh, amount of load that can be carried by the connection before the connection fails. Kasi pag nag-apply ka ng 86.6 or lagpas dito, mag-fail na yung connection with respect sa bolt. Specifically sa shear. Mag-fail sa shear. Mapupulit to. Ma-divide ma ma into half to yung bolt natin. Bago pa man mag-rapture uh, mag yung mismong uh, plate natin with a magnitude of 121.88. So, hindi, hindi yan mag-govern. Ito yung mag-govern. Yung 86.6 uh, kips. Okay? So, yun yung gagamitin natin na uh, capacity ng connection natin. So, from there, pwede na natin ulit kumpitin yung uh, service type loads. I mean, service loads. We, we know that the capacity must be greater than or equal sa applied load sa TU na kaya, na kaya directly kasi tayo. Ang VTN natin, nakumpit na natin, 86.6. And uh, yung TU natin, ginamit pa rin natin is yung uh, load, dead load, live load, load case pa rin. Yung uh, 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 live load kasi yan lang naman yung mag-govern doon malamang if we are just talking about gravity loads, dead load, live load. And since again, sabi niya, yung uh, live load is 3 times the dead load, substitute natin yung 3 TDL sa live load. And then simplify, 6 TDL pa rin naman yung lalabas. And then uh, TD, TD, TDL na lang nakawala dyan, compute for TDL. That will be equal to 14.43 kips. So, ibig sabihin lang yan, ang dead load natin must be less than or equal sa 14.43 para yung capacity natin hindi lalagpas sa applied load na TU. Okay? So, with that, we can now easily compute for the live load times 3 lang natin to. It will be equal to 43.29. So, yung hinanap sa tanong na tensile service load capacity, which is just dead load plus live load, i-add lang natin tong dead load, 14.43, sa live load na 43.29, and that will be equal to 57.72 kips. And that is the answer for the uh, second situation <coughs> dito sa problem natin. Okay? So, with that, ibig sabihin lang yan, we have to apply a tension force T equal to 57.72 kips before the connection fail. And if ever mag-fail yung uh, connection, <coughs> it, it will fail in the shear strength ng bolt natin. Kung saan yung threads are not included or are included in the shear plane of the connection. 